The second paper is on mechanism and priority design for distributional objectives and application to improve the distribution of teachers in schools. We have uh, three of the, uh, the co-authors here with us and I welcome Umut, uh, we'll start. Thank you. Thanks a lot for inviting us. And so the title is a little bit different, but this is the same paper. And so as you said, so Utku and Julian is here. So other reporters are Olivier and Camille. So, so in this paper, so we are looking for a two-sided uh, labor market. And so the, the difference from the other labor markets is basically, so we are, we, there is a centralized reassignment and assignment of the workers. And this is a common in both public and private sectors. So if you would like to give examples of such markets are the, the, the doctors assigning to the hospitals, the, the police officers are assigned to the, their stations, teachers are assigned to the public schools, and you can also think about the, the job rotation in large corporations. Okay, so the, the main difference here is basically we have uh, both new workers and the existing workers in those kind of the markets. You can think that so some teachers are uh, new graduates and so some teachers are currently employed in their positions and they are looking for a new job, a new position. Another difference from the, 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 the well-studied centralized markets that so we have a statistical matching, so which needs to be improved. So what, what I say by improved, so we would like to make the, the, the position of the workers better and we would like to also improve the the, the, the set of the employees match to the each uh, employer okay so this this by better so it, it may come from some distributional objective so i will discuss it later and despite that so the employers have preferences here so we give right to the existing workers to keep their positions if they cannot find a better position so these three points make this markets different from the other uh, the matching markets centralized matching markets that have been studied in the literature and when we look at these markets, so we can observe some uh, distribution problems. Okay, so for example, what I mean by distribution problems, so if you look at the, the rural hospitals in the United States, they are having difficulties to recruiting doctors. Okay, so the, 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 there are not many good doctors in the rural hospitals. And another example, and th that is the motivating example of this paper, is that the, the experienced teachers tend to work in schools that serve more to the affluent uh, families and high achieving students. Okay. So let me give a, a picture here, okay, so two maps, so which is showing the, the negative correlation between the, the, the share of uh, students in disadvantaged schools and the, the, the ratio of the teachers, the, the experienced uh, teachers to the inexperienced teachers. So this is a picture from France. And so every year about 90,000 teachers are asked there for, for their first position or the being re reassigned to a new position. And as you can see on the left panel here that, so where we have more disadvantaged students, okay, coming from uh, lower socioeconomic families, we have less experienced teachers there. And this is a problem that the policy makers would like to solve, okay? And so once you think about the, the, a possible solution here is that, so we can give some kind of a salary incentives. Okay, so we can increase the, the, the salaries at, at the disadvantaged schools, and so we can motivate the teachers to work there. However, so in, in France and in other uh, occasions, so the, since these are the, the public sector jobs, so they are using some kind of a fixed pay scale. Okay, so they are, they, are, they, are, uh, they cannot change the, 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 the salary based on the, the position. And if you look at the, this kind of the works, okay, so in professions that attract works based on interesting motivation, the wage elastics are low. Okay, so basically, so you need to increase wage a lot to have a good solution for this kind of the distribution problem. So what we are doing in this paper is basically, so we are trying to solve this problem or, or trying to introduce a remedy to, to solve this problem by using the mechanism itself. Okay, so since these, these markets are using a centralized assignment mechanism or reassignment mechanism, so we are trying to answer the, the first question, can we benefit from the, the, the mechanism itself to solve these distribution problems? If yes, how can we design this reassignment mechanism that fulfills the distribution objectives? Okay, so for example, if you think about the, 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 the French case, so the distribution objective can be the, the following. Okay, so they may, the, the Minister of Education may want more experienced teachers to assign to the, the schools where we have more disadvantaged students. Okay. So the answer for the first question is yes, 
And for the second question, so we introduced two strategy proof mechanisms. So where the teachers are reporting their preferences truthfully, and that improve the welfare of the schools and the teachers at the same time. Okay, so we are not just looking for the welfare of the teachers. So we are also looking for the a better distribution for the schools. And we are also achieving efficiency and stability, which are two desired features in the literature. So under both uh, mechanisms, so under each mechanism. Okay. And so we are also using the, the French data that we conduct an empirical and counterfactual analysis to show that our methods, methods can improve the distribution of the teachers in school. So since the time is limited, so I will try to more focus on the, the, the theory part. Okay, so the, our, our mechanisms, and if time permits, I will, I will show a few slides about our counterfactual, counterfactual uh, results. Okay, so theory. So this is a two-sided market. And so we have teachers on the one side and the schools on the other side. Okay, so as I mentioned before, so the difference here is basically we have a statistical match. So each teacher is either a new teacher or a tenured teacher. Okay, so a tenured teacher is currently working in, in some school. And each teacher has a type that captures his or her observable characteristics. What can they be? It can be gender, it can be the race, it can be experience. And for the specific to this, this paper, so we are using this, this type as an experience. And each teacher has preference over the support. For the school side, each school has ranking over the types of the teachers. Okay, so remember, whenever I say type, okay, so I mean the, the experience level of the teachers. And those can reflect the, the central authority objectives. For example, if, if, the, central, if the central authority or the Minister of Education would like to assign experienced teacher to the disadvantaged schools, then the disadvantaged schools will rank the teachers by decreasing level of their experience. Okay, so you can think about other kind of objectives. So we are trans we are translating those kind of objectives into the type ranking of the schools. Okay, and when we are looking for the, the school's preference over the teachers, uh, the, the set of the teachers, it is based on the Lorentz domination according to type ranking. Okay, what I mean here is basically a school is better off if for each teacher's type, the number of teachers with, with this type or a, or a more preferred type increases after the match. Okay. So the desired properties in this market are the status quo improvement. Okay, so remember at the beginning, I mentioned that so we would like to improve the, the assignment or the initial assignment of both teachers and the schools. And the other property is the strategy proofness. So we would like to, since we are running a centralized mechanism here, so we would like to collect information, okay, so which is basically the true preference of the teachers. So you can think that why we are not looking for the school preferences, because the school preferences are commonly known here, okay, so they are some kind of objective of the, the, the central authority, or they are commonly known based on test or something like that. The two additional properties that we are looking is the two-sided efficiency. Okay, and the, the, the fairness and the stability. So which are the, the, the very common properties they are looked after on, under two-sided matching markets. Unfortunately, these two properties are conflict with each other. So we introduced two different mechanisms and both mechanisms are uh, satisfying the, the statistical improving, improvement and the strategy proofness. And the, the first one is satisfying the efficiency and the second one is satisfying the stability. The first mechanism. Okay, so you can think that the, the, the main uh, property of the efficiency in the, in the two-sided matching markets is the parity efficiency. Unfortunately, the parity efficiency and status quo improving are conflicting with each other. So we introduce a, a, a new efficiency concept which we call status quo improving teacher optimality. So which requires a, the, the mechanism to be status quo improving. And it also requires its outcome is not parity dominated by another status quo improving matching for teachers, okay? So here we are not looking for the, the, the same for the, the schools because so we are having some kind of a impossible results based on the incentives. So here the, the SI teacher optimality is a stronger uh, condition than the parity efficiency, which says that, okay, SI teacher optimality is, is, is also a, a parity efficiency concept, okay? Our first mechanism is based on the, the well-known top trading cycle mechanism, and we call it as the statistical improving cycles and change mechanism. So if you are not familiar to the, this, this literature, top trading cycles mechanism was proposed and used in the school choice, in the kidney exchange, and in the housing marks and many other applications. However, type, tip, 
TTC type, top trading cycle type mechanisms improve one side of the markets, namely the, the teachers. And it is not considering the welfare of the schools. Therefore, so we cannot directly adopt those kind of mechanisms here. In fact, so we are introducing two novelty. So a novelty here, which is the pointing cross. Okay, so our mechanism will work similar to the top trading cycle mechanism. So we, we are working on a directed graph. But so we, we need to be careful about so where the schools are pointing and where the teachers are pointing so to in, in order to achieve uh, the, the statistical improvement. Okay, so the schools are pointing in, in a very intuitive way. Okay, so they would like to send out to the teachers. They, they don't want that much. Okay, so they are they are they are uh, pointing the, 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 the less preferred type teachers first, and it goes like this. On the teacher side. So under the top trading cycle mechanism, teachers are allowed to point their best choice, but we are restricting them not to point to their best choice. Okay, so basically what we are looking is the, as the following. Okay, if you if you would like to replace a teacher with another one, okay, would it cause a, a statistical improvement? Okay, so if yes, then we allow the teacher to point to that school, or if that school has a vacant position to start with, then the teacher can point to that school. Okay. And uh, in each step, the teacher points to the best school that she is allowed to point. Okay, since I don't have enough time, okay, so I will skip the example. But so if someone is interested, I will I will go over it later. Okay, so the, the when we look at the, the, the properties of this mechanism, okay, even we are not allowing teachers to point to their best choice. Okay, we have restriction here. This mechanism is statistical improving teacher optimal. Okay, so which means that it is Pareto efficient. Okay, moreover, it is also satisfying the strategy proofness. So, which basically says that okay, so this mechanism is, is a really good fit if, if the, 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 the main objective is statistical improvement and strategy proofness, and in addition to the efficiency. Okay, so our second uh, mechanism is, 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 is targeting the stability. Okay, so basically, so we don't want to have some kind of the blocking peers in, 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 in the outcome. Okay, and in the rest of the presentation, in order to keep everything simple, so I, I will assume that schools do not have empty seams to, and that there is no new teacher, but so our results fall on, under that generalization. And the, the standard stable and statistical improvement conditions are not compatible because you can just think that, so when we have an existing uh, teacher, okay, so the, the school may prefer another teacher and would like to replace that existing teacher, but then it will be conflicting with the uh, statistical improvement for that teacher. So what we are doing is, so we are having a, a, a new stability condition, which we call SI stability. And so we are allowing some kind of the blocking pairs to, uh, to occur. And uh, we, the, the, the mechanism that we are proposing is based on the, the teacher proposing default acceptance mechanism, which has been suggested for the doctor hospital matching. So which has been also suggested for the school choice and many other occasions. And here our innovation is the design of the choice rule. Okay. So how do we design the, the choice rule here is basically, so we treat each position of the school having a different order over the teachers. Okay, so this is not, uh, each each position is you can think that each position is an independent object here, and so how we are constructing that that uh, that prior order or the, the order over the teachers is basically we first distribute uh, the statistical employees to individual positions, then for each individual position the, the statistical occupying teacher that we distributed is ranked first, and we are only allowing the the teachers who have weakly better type than that the statistical occupying teacher to be accepted. Okay. You you have one minute. Thank you very much. So let me let me wrap up. So and the, we are filling these positions based one by one, considering the constructed priority of two positions. Okay. So let me skip the examples here. And by using this this choice function, so we apply the deferred acceptance algorithm and we find our desired result. And uh, this we call this mechanism as the statistical improvement for acceptance mechanism, which is statistical proof and it's satisfying our, our stability notion. And so uh, the, the way that we constructed the, this, this, this choice function is also achieving the, the highest welfare for the teachers. Okay. So let me just show one picture here. So 
this is this is the, our counterfactual analysis, and so you can see from this this picture that so when we compare the the, the our proposed mechanisms, so which are the, the left on the left side of the the, the 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 picture, so it is causing an improvement for the both the the, the regions which are having a less experienced teachers, so which are shown with the blue circles, and it is also causing improvement for the. The regions which are which are uh, having the more experienced teacher, and we also compare the, this mechanism with the benchmark mechanisms, and so we observe that so we are also achieving good uh, features. I'm sorry for the the not using the time wisely and not uh, giving more uh, information about our counterfactual analysis. So the, the the papers that we have cited and the related papers are shown in red here, and let me conclude. So we are looking for a a two-sided market here and so where we would like to achieve some kind of a distribution objectives and so we are embedding this distribution objective as the the the, the preference of the the, the multi-unit demand side here and we are achieving those those distribution objectives and so in addition to that we are also achieving the the, the efficiency for TTC type mechanism and we are also achieving the, the stability for the DA type mechanism and so I have just talked about the, the, the teacher assignment. So this, these mechanisms can be applied to not just for the, the teacher assignment market or the reassignment market. So we can apply this to, to other markets. Thank you. Uh, there is one question uh, from Irene uh, asking about whether you have tried using uh, priority design in, in this practice. And if you did, um and how you did uh how you did it yeah she's asking whether you use priority design in the work thank you yeah. very much so so this is this is some uh, this is a project which is a uh, related with uh, julian oliver's and uh, camille's project so which is basically on the teacher assignment and i know that so julian may answer this much better than me but so i know that so they have been closely working with uh, the, the ministry of education in france and so their initial paper was not looking for this kind of the distribution object. So they are looking for two-sided efficiency, so which is related, but I'm sure that so they are also thinking or, or, or talking about with, uh, with the, the Ministry of Education about this kind of the improvement. So in addition to that, so we are also contacting with the, the, the school districts so in order to increase the diversity so by using similar methods. And we are in the middle of the, 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 the talks right now. Thank you very much.